Hey guys, this is Alex Chamberlain, and I just want to do a little update on my 2018 Enduro. Just so you guys know where I'm at, how the parts have been holding up, how I've liked the bike, and how I've modified it a little bit since the last video. Uh, this is again a low budget video filmed on my iPhone, so I hope you guys don't hate that. But uh, yeah, stay tuned and we'll talk about the bike a little bit more. So I've owned this bike since November at this point, and I think I've done two races on it. I've done the EWS in Manizales in Colombia. And I did the TDS Enduro up in Grass Valley in California. So I've had a fair amount of time on it. I don't even know how many thousands of miles at this point. But uh, I feel like I know the bike pretty well and I've done a lot of changes on it. You guys first saw this bike in November. It had Bond Trigger wheels, TRP brakes, uh, Fox Air Shock, and yeah, a couple other things that changed. But yeah, I just wanted to tell you what I've kind of modified, what I've changed from that stock build, and how it was working. So the biggest thing you'll notice is now I have a coil on the bike. It is a RockShox Vivid, and it was one of the only ones in the market that would fit. I think it was the EXT Storia and the Olins, but uh, this shaft diameter is big enough and it works with the bike yoke, and it won't snap like the Fox DHX2 would have snapped right here. Um, it's just a suspension design that puts a lot of load on that shaft and that was a big problem why the air shock was blowing out um, I literally blew out the float X2 maybe a month. It might have lasted a month I blew it out two times within the first couple months So yeah, I just couldn't blow out my suspension anymore and the shock was really finicky I got it to a setting where I sort of liked it, but the second I got it to that setting it would blow up again <laughs> so yeah, that's really the only reason there's a coil on this bike. It's not, I don't know, I don't necessarily prefer coils, but this bike's so playful and poppy that the coil really didn't have any negatives other than it does bottom out a little harsher, little harsher than uh, the air shock. But I mean, that's the nature of the coil, it's gonna happen. And honestly, it's not that often. You only really notice it on a really big G out or um, yeah, just a flat landing drop. But when it does bottom, like it but doesn't bottom out that often, but when it does, it's it's super harsh and you very you definitely know about it. So I don't know. Again, as I've said in past videos, the rear suspension on this bike is not my favorite. Um it has a lot of feedback, it feels pretty harsh, and then uh it kind of rides in the last half of its travel a lot, it seems. Um, even when you're at the suggested like 27 to 30 percent sag. So that shock is new. I also have these race face effect cranks. Uh, I had a warranty issue with the Shimano XTRs uh, and I needed a crank set like for the week and it was going to take like a couple weeks to get the XTR back. But these were only $100 and I put them on my bike. I haven't noticed one difference from the XTRs. I think they're like 100 grams heavier. And yeah, I've had no issues so they've just stayed on the bike. Uh, that goes to show like these are a hundred dollar race face effect cranks um, you don't really need better than that you might get a slight bit lighter but these cranks are super stiff super strong and they do the trick just fine um, another update I've been using the DHF downhill casings and they felt really good this back tire is getting pretty clapped out I think this is a month and a half on it but that was also a race weekend at the TDS and Honestly, if a tire just lasts through the weekend there, you're doing good. But uh, yeah, the front tire's been on for the same amount of time I put them on on the same day. So this one's not nearly as clapped, but you can see the side knobs are getting a little, a little bit of use, but not too bad. This back, the side knobs are like flaking apart. So um, this one will get replaced soon. I think I'm going to be back on the aggressor. Um, the dirt's drying up and you just don't need as burly of a tire at this point. So what else? I got a specialized power saddle now. I liked my old Ergon, but uh, I actually bent the seat on my dirt jumper. So I put the Ergon on the dirt jumper and then took this off my road bike and put it on this bike. And it's, a, it's more comfortable, I would say, so far. Um, yeah, it's only been on for a week. It feels more comfortable when you first sit on it, but maybe my ass hasn't molded to it yet because uh, once you're like 20, 25 miles in, I thought the Ergon was a little more comfortable. So uh, that might just take time for my 
I'm about to get more comfortable on this thing, but it's funny when you start out, I'm like, whoa, this feels great. But then uh, I start being sore in different places, like different muscles are getting sore on this saddle versus the other, so that might be it. Uh, other than that, the Saints have been working well. I went back to full metallic pads instead of the semi-metallics from Trucker Co. And the, metall the metallics are cool, but uh, they have really good bite and they don't heat up as much. But uh, I feel like, I don't know if this happens to you guys, but every time I run metallic pads, the first time you press the brakes for that day or the first time you press your brakes for that run, they don't work as well as they should. Like a resin always feels the same, and I feel like the metallics, you almost have to get a little bit of heat in them before they really start working. Um, I should know that by now. I've been ri riding like 10 or 11 years, but I always thought that was weird. Like, do you guys have that same issue? Do you guys know what I'm talking about, or am I just crazy, or how I just never bet in metallic pads enough? They work great when it gets, uh, yeah, when you're on some steep trail and it starts getting hot, but it definitely feel like you gotta heat them up. But other than that, I think that's all the parts that I changed. Not very many, but I just wanted to keep you guys updated. Uh, I know the last time I talked about this bike, I wasn't super stoked on it. Um, I think it's a great bike, but uh, now I have even more thoughts about it, and I do feel like I want to replace it. That sucks to say. The components are great. It's just the frame. I don't know. It's... I just, I think the geometry spot on, I love it. I just wish that rear suspension was able to feel better. The coil definitely helped over the air to get it a little more supple because it was definitely like almost too harsh in the air and I could not even back up the low speed enough. Whereas this shock, I can run proper amounts of low speed compression, but I still have the suppleness. It just, I don't know, the ending stroke is not, not where I'd like it to be. And it, I just, I don't know, it has 160 mil of travel or 165, I've never got a clear answer on that one. But uh, it feels like a 140 bike. Like it feels like a SB55 travel-wise, but it doesn't feel like as supported. So that's a pretty big negative if you ask me. And I don't know, why settle when you could be on something different? And I actually try to look at new bikes. I try to look at the, I don't want the Hightower LT for certain reasons, like super slack seat angle and that VPP I wasn't the happiest with, but I looked at that, not in stock, Ibis Ritmo, not in stock, uh, Rocky Mountain Instinct BC Edition, not in stock. All these bikes were like until August was when I could get them. So there's honestly no frame on the market that I've been thinking of that I can get. Uh, I wasn't even gonna go to a bike maybe without a bottle cage, um, like the Yeti, cause it was so good, uh, but yeah, no, you literally cannot buy a bike right now, apparently, unless it's on the retail floor of some bike shop, which I'm not going to do that. So, yeah, I can't find a bike, and we'll be on this for a little bit unless something changes real soon. But uh, there's a rumor about a few bikes coming out in the near future, and maybe we'll have to check those out. But basically, in summary, I think it's a really good bike. I can ride it plenty fast, but it's sketchy. Like, this bike never feels, like, super solid and planted. Um, that might be why it's fast. Maybe it's skipping over a lot of the terrain. Or maybe I'm riding faster. That's why it feels sketchy. I don't know. But this bike, you kind of, I don't know. You got to ride recklessly and definitely not in control to be fast. So not the safest feeling, and I'm a pretty conservative rider. But those are some of my thoughts on the bike. One day I'll actually do a full review on this thing. But for now, know that... Yeah, it's capable of being ridden fast, but maybe the bike doesn't matter as much as you think. Like, I feel certain things in each bike, but at the end of the day, there's two wheels and it goes forward, right? So, I don't know. I maybe could ride any bike on the planet just as fast as you could another bike. But those are just my two cents. I hope this update was actually worth watching. Um, I know it's pretty low budget and it's just me just talking over a little video of my bike, but... uh I want to make more videos for you guys. I just need a little more motivation. Uh, money is a good motivator, but uh, I don't know. I like engaging with you guys in the comments. I love all the questions you have. And if you really want me to keep producing videos and you lasted this long in the video, please comment below. Tell me, how, tell me if you got to that point. And yeah, I like hearing from you guys. It's probably the best part of posting videos on YouTube is all the interaction and seeing you guys stoked, seeing you guys like talking about bikes, getting new bikes going on different trails, like 
giving me options, places to ride, stuff like that. That's why it's fun to be on YouTube. So definitely respond in the comments. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. And on that note, I think I'm going to start editing this video and post it up. But yeah, hope you guys have a great rest of your day and hopefully I'll see you guys out on the trails. Cheers. Woo! <laughs>